Hello YouTube, this is Dakota from Bowtie Media, and today we have another installment of the Reviews Roundup where I go over uh, albums, EPs, mixtapes, whatever, that came out in this past month, uh, this month being March, because I'm a little behind, uh, and give my little review and score for each project. So uh, without any further ado, let's hop into it. With everything, everything with the Mountainhead record, uh, a pretty brilliant art pop record with hints of rock, dance, and indie. This record is full of range, uh, whether it's from Jonathan Higgs' vocal performances or the backing production. There's almost no shortage of dense narratives and deep lyricism. Um, yeah, scattered all throughout this record is what Imagine Dragons wishes they were. Uh, and this is an 8 out of 10, a Bowtie 8. Then we got Odd Prophet with The Tempest Part 1. I am clearly missing something here. I don't get this. I don't like it. I don't understand how this is musical in any aspect. Tell me I'm missing something here for sure. I'm giving this a Bowtie 2. Then we got Sultan and Shepard with Endless Dawn, an atmospheric progressive house record for sure, uh, but not one that feels overly unique. Um, I can't really think of anything that this record does better than any other progressive house album out there. Um, it is ultimately like an okay record that probably overstated its welcome, and I'll give this a bow tied six. Then we got Valentino Khan with Powerline. Uh, this definitely exceeded my recent uh, expectations of Valentino Khan, but um, wasn't much more than a kind of simplistic techno project. Uh, there's definitely some highlight tracks here, but overall I didn't find it was anything, um, yeah, super individualistic, I would say. And this will also score Bowtide 6. Then we got Zensei with Sound Therapy. Uh, definitely Zensei's best EP yet. Uh, the usual kind of lo-fi atmosphere is ever-present, and there's some certain newness to most of the tracks here that give this EP some separation from his last couple. And this would score Bowtide 7. Then we got Ariana Grande with Eternal Sunshine. Uh, venturing more into dance pop than her last couple records, Ariana has put out a very serviceable, simple pop record. Uh, there's definitely some odd lyrical choices throughout that need to be addressed, I think, in counseling, but uh, overall was a pretty pleasant LP. And I'll score it a bow tied 7. We got Joby with Hazard Statements. A newcomer to the scene, Joby, is trying to solidify himself in this very competitive rhythm tear-out space, and this is definitely the way to do it. Um, with this being said, though, his second EP under this kind of his belt here, Joby's harsh, syncopated, glitchy sound design is undoubtedly unique. All that being said, though, this particular EP felt a little bit of a minor step back in terms of overall mix quality and production from his last, so I will score this a bow tied 6. Then we got Kaiwachi with Morphosia, and uh, yeah, Kaiwachi's latest EP is a massive one that really should be an album, but regardless, this thing is full of brooding and abrasive dubstep, um, almost to its own demise. Um, my biggest gripe with this project is that I'm constantly getting tonal whiplash. In one moment, the track is this beautiful vocal and melody, only for it to turn on a dime and smack you in the face the next second, so I will score to about tied six. Then we got Marshmallow and Sudden Death with Mellow Death Tapes Volume 1. Uh, simultaneously exceeded my expectations while also failing to meet them. Uh, this is a such a like bizarre collaboration and EP that all of just sort of is. Uh, I, I, I do think the sound and style can be refined into something special with future installments, but for now this is just is. And it will score Bowtide 5. Then we got Martin Garrix with IDEM, a collection of older EDM IDs. Get it? ID, EDM. Uh, yeah, this is just a collection of fine Martin Garrix tune, a touch nostalgic, but more so fairly generic electro slash commercial house. So this will be a Bowtide 6. Then we got Rack with Hyper, a very approachable EP for Rack uh, that brings forth a very calming production with easy listening uh, lyricism here. Uh, this EP is light on its heels and is uh, great to kind of set the background uh, mood to. And so I will give this a Bowtide 6. We got Reaper with Challenger. Uh, Reaper's sophomore album has uh, lost a lot of flair that made the unique debut uh, so good. Um, I, I would say his debut so unique and, and strong um, with a shorter track list and similar production from song to song. This isn't necessarily a bad LP. It's just kind of same samey from one to another. So this is score bow tied six. Then we got Rez with Can You See Me. Uh, Rez's fourth studio album is a lot more of the same in every way. From album to album and song to song, Rez just can't seem to escape her kind of gloomy techno and repetitive mid-tempo style. Um, this is a f the first full-length project of hers that sounds actively boring. And I will give this a bow tie five. We got Chet Porter with everything you've ever seen. After years in the industry and building up his own sound, Chet Porter delivers a marvelous debut album with everything you've ever seen. Uh, jumping around some Indietronica, Future Bass, and Garage production, the sound design on this record has all this like ethereal flair to it. Um, each of the tracks here are moving and oh so fun to engage with. I will score this at Bowtide 8. Then we got Chill with Sport Mode, uh, not much more than a standard Speed House EP. There's some interesting switch-ups and genre bending going on, but most of it just kind of falls flat for me. And I'll score this a bow tied five. 
We got Fortet with three after a flurry of underwhelming 2020 projects. Fortet is back on top of his game with a truly thought provoking record. Um, a mixture of down tempo, ambient, and micro house tunes. Fortet's intricate sound design is potentially uh, better than ever on this one, and I'll score this a bowtie eight. We got Justin Timberlake with Everything I Thought I Was. Uh, while longer albums are no stranger to JT, this record is long because he doesn't really know what he wants to do with it. Uh, bouncing around a slew of random genres, styles, and tones, there's clearly no direction for this album. It's not his worst record to date, but by far his blandest. And I'll score this a bow tied five. Then we got Zoo with Grace. Uh, Zoo had seemingly hit a wall with his deep house sound as he takes the leap over to, to a predominantly pop trap sound um, with this record, but this album is definitely too long and definitely has way too many competing sounds throughout um, and on top of it all zoo's vocal performances are not getting better um, this might be the beginning of the end for zoo and this will score a bowtie five then we got Blank with the Emergence EP. This EP managed to both exceed and also not meet my expectations again. Um, this project is full of almost, of almost, I would say, almost key emphasis, almost really good stuff, but ultimately ends up being just good. Uh, Blank bounces around a bunch of different genres and tones with a surprising amount of tonal cohesion, I will say. Um, if there was just a bit of extra, like, 10, 15% put into this uh, in every track here, I think this could be Blank's best ever, no question, but for now, I'll just give this a bowtie seven. Then we got Cage with four symbols. Uh, Cage's signature bass house sound is starting to really lose its luster. Uh, what was once a new creative sound has now sort of become a derivative version of its original, and I just didn't find anything too interesting about this. So this is a score bow tied at five. Then we got Mali and Chami with Veni Vidi Vici, a mixture of kind of boring baseline driven tech house and brighter nostalgic uh, tech house, whereas the latter is substantially stronger than the former. Uh, this could have been something really special, but ended up falling more towards Mala's historically uninteresting sound design. And this is score bow tied at six. Then we got Medicine with Sounds, uh, a tranquil nature-esque record that stays firm to its ambient roots. Um, it doesn't need to do much, and it doesn't really. And this is score bow tied at six. Then we got Pnow with Hyperbolic. Uh, Pnow's most commercial sounding record to date, Hyperbolic, is sadly full of kind of generic dance pop tracks. Um, yes, the beats are, yeah, easily danceable, but Pnow has managed to kind of blend danceability uh, with creativity better in the past than they were kind of able to do with this record. And this will score Bowtie at six. Then we got Scro and Underbelly with Scrobelly, uh, a brilliant pairing of producers and their respective sounds. Scrobelly is a wonderful blending of future bass, hyper pop, Indietronica, emo, and so much more. Uh, and despite the whirlwind of genres, this project is incredibly cohesive in its production and storytelling. There are moments of intimate reflection and moments of outbursted anger, um, both of which feel ripe for their own moments in the track list. And I'll give this a bowtie eight. Then we got Enema with Genesis 2. Uh, Enema's second installment of the Genesis series, I guess, is a step up from the first, but only marginally. Uh, this record still struggles with the lack of diversity and keeping those prolonged um, <laughs> tracks with any interest. And um, gotta get rid of that kind of same-ish melodic techno song that's just the same thing kind of over and over again. So it's not terrible, it's just not really doing a whole ton. This is Scorbo Tide 6. Then we've got Beyonce with Cowboy Carter. I hate country. But this is really good. Beyonce is queen. This is Garbo Tide 8. Then we got Borgor with uh, Caracosio. I'm sure I said that wrong, but um, yeah, a five-year album hiatus for this. Uh, Borgor's latest record is horribly disorganized. Trying to blend together dubstep and trap production with hip-hop lyricism can often yield positive results uh, in the scene, yet uh, Borgor provides little to latch onto. The lyricism here is quite crass. The flows are awkward. The kicks are flat. The synths are weak, and you're constantly being hit with tonal whiplash. Um, this is just a messy record that's trying way too hard to be cool. And I'll give this a bow tie too. Then we got Gesalfestein with Gamma. Uh, yeah, in the modern EDM landscape where darker, colder production shines, uh, Gesalfestein turns in a fairly underwhelming record for what could have been an industry staple. Uh, this LP leans heavily into that distorted EBM, electronic body music is kind of what EBM is. Um, that's all production and the signature creepy vocals that he kind of puts on, these like monotone, like, like it's kind of like weird, like not quite sexy, but also not quite fully creepy. Um, there just ultimately isn't much to come back to on this record. And sadly, I'll just give this a bow tied six. Then we got Morte with Grave Altar. Uh, well, I do believe this to be a very strong trench slash rhythm EP. Uh, this is comparatively more linear in song structure and narratives than their last project. Um, this is top tier Morte just without the expansive storytelling. And I'll give this a bow tied seven. 
Then we got Netty with You're a Real One. This EP manages to feel both deeply nostalgic for early 2015's EDM while keeping the production um, elements and mixing like here in 2024 um, quite quite present. Um, this project is just a fantastic listen when you need a little pick-me-up as a kind of bright and cheerful soundscape. Uh, it takes you on a bit of a trip, so I'll give this a bow type 7. And finally, we've got Rico Nasty and Boys Noise with the Hardcore Dreams EP. Uh, I mean, this they definitely had some fun making this record, but uh, too much of the lyricism here just sounds like it's coming from a teenager who just learned what sex was. Um, and the production from Boys Noise leaves more to be desired as well. So I'll give this a bow tied four. Uh, but that's been it. That has been my reviews roundup for the month of March 2024. And uh, let me know what you think of any and all of the uh, things here in the comment section below. But other than that, I'm Dakota from Bowtie Media, and I'll see you guys in another video.